I played Arcane Odyssey for 24 hours and became overpowered. Here's how. Hour 1 began with me creating my character and choosing which magic I would be playing with. I gave my character red hair because I was originally intending on using fire magic, but I ended up choosing lightning magic. Shocking, I know. And his brilliant name was William Williams. Very creative. That's what everyone else does. I started the story, looked around the starter island for some treasure, spawned my very convenient rowboats, and moved on to the first area of the game, Red Wake. <laughs> on the way to Red Wake, I raced another player to the dock and totally destroyed him. Ha! Get tricked, noob! But the rejoicing didn't last long because I had to talk to one of the guards and defend Red Wake from jaw pirates. I killed a few of them with my steel toothpick and my really squishy lightning magic, which pushed me to level 2, so that's nice. After defeating the pirates, I moved on and talked to the innkeeper in the red fin and grabbed some rest, which pushed me to level 3. Hey, why does my character level up after waking up? When I do that, I just wake up tired. Anyways, after talking to the innkeeper and the chief of Red Wake, I learned that I need to go and help the people of Red Wake. I did the quest which teaches my character how to cook, which, believe it or not, he's already a better cook than I ever will be, IRL. Retrieved a necklace from someone, cleared out a warehouse full of rats, and also got the quest for fighting bandits on a local island. This quest will be important here in a moment, since I'll need to hit level 20 before going to my first boss fight. After dispatching all the bandits on the island, I returned to Red Wake, and also after remembering to switch the recording to 60 FPS, I literally almost forgot to switch it to 60 FPS, I then proceeded to farm the bandit quest for the rest of hour one. I did manage to grab a sailboat, which did speed up the time sailing from Red Wake to the Bandit Island by a little bit, but this grind did take a little while. When I stopped farming bandits, it was hour two, and I was level 19. What a jump. After I was done completing the bandit quest a bunch of times, I then enchanted my armor that I looted off of the dead corpses of some of the bandits, then went fishing for a bit. Yeah, what? 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 <laughs> While I was fishing, I completed a quest and gained some items that bumped my level up to level 20, which means boss time. I got in my ship and sailed to the Hermit's Island, picking up any oh, boxes nice. along uh, the way. Which... I then fought Shura, beat him, looted his camp without his nice. permission, and then sailed all the way back to Red Wake. As a then level 21, my time in Red Wake came to a close. It was time to move on to Frost Mill and begin a long grind there. After progressing in the story a little bit, I got the quest for both the Ice Smugglers and the Frost Brigands, then repeated that quest for literal hours, kind of. The latter half of hour two and the first two thirds of hour three were of me farming the same two quests over and over and over again until I hit the comfortable level of 40. While I was grinding, I did do a little bit of fishing and some cooking. I also taught a newer player how to maximize their grind on Frost Mill by doing exactly what I was doing. Once I was level 40, however, I then went and danced with a funny flare curse lady, which, believe it or not, was a cakewalk. With her defeated and with the vermilion bracelet in my possession, I went back to the alchemist on Frost Mill and sold my trash for money. I then enchanted the bracelet, and I got... <laughs> nimble. You know, I hate this game sometimes. Anyways, after that happened, I then proceeded to farm the two fighting quests repeatedly until I hit level 45. Then it was time to proceed to Ceres Island. Shortly after hour four began, I then proceeded to go to the Stepstones and ascended them so I could continue the story. This is also the location of a quest that will be necessary for grinding and leveling up. After completing a few odd jobs for the citizens of Ceres Island, I then proceeded to talk to Irish Vista. He gives a quest that allows players to duel him for money and experience. The best part is that this quest is repeatable. So I repeated this quest and grinded experience from him. While I was farming, there was another player that hopped in and started farming him while I was trying to do the same. Instead of fighting against the two of them, I decided to stand on my ship and cheer him on. After that fight was over, I decided to server hop and go to another server so I could farm Arish without any issues. This worked, so I continued farming him. This went on for even longer than what the Frost Mill quests did. Outside of doing the dual quest a bunch, I finished the Sky Pumpkin quest to get access to Sky Pumpkins, which would give me access to some strong food that would help me out later. But for the entirety of Hour 5, I got the Arish Vista quest, sailed to the island, fought him, beat him, reset, and repeated that over and over again. It was about this time that I noticed the devs nerfed the Irish Vista quest by a lot. The level goal I was originally aiming for at this point was level 80, and I was barely level 56. So, 
I persevered until around level 60. I did also grab the Sky Apple Harvesting Quest as well. It saved me some time, which by the way, it didn't save much since the spawning time of Sky Apples is annoyingly long. But I sailed out to the next objective after I hit level 60. At Sky Cliff Island, I encountered some hooded figures. I then proceeded to clap said hooded figures, and then I returned to Saris Island. At the start of Hour 6, I returned to Ren at the base of the Stepstones and continued the story a bit. Since the Arch Vista quest was taking longer than what I initially expected, I decided to head to the library and learn about the Order of a Seer. Thankfully, 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 these quests gave me a bunch of experience. So, I was level 64 by this point. After talking to Treebeard from Wish.com, I then went to Cirrus and fought Arish again until I got bored and decided to progress in the story again, which I was about level 66 at, at that point. So, I got on my ship and sailed out to the Jin Ruins to encounter the Order members and ultimately fight Lord Elias. It was a fun and challenging fight that lasted for at least 20 minutes. I was dodging his attacks. He was dodging mine. We were hitting each other back to back to back. At the end of the fight... Where the fudge did he go? I emerged victorious. And to make things even better, I managed to get a drop from him. Shortly after the fight, I cooked some food, admired my new chess piece, and then sailed back to Saris Island to meet up with Iris and to also hit level 70. Hour 7 is the part of the journey where I got stuck. I've been slowly leveling higher and higher until this point, but Sailor's Lodge is where my quick leveling plateaued. Sure, there's a couple of quests that I could do there, and also repeat, but y'all would not like to see literal hours of fishing for one type of fish. So, I foolishly decided to accept Maya's pirate quest. Seriously, why did I do that? <laughs> this quest took forever to complete. So, once I finished with all the quests on Sailor's Lodge, I decided to sail out to the Forest of Saruna and complete the quest there since I needed to be level 75 to proceed into Fort Talos. Once I made it to Seruno, I set my spawn and I got back in my ship in hopes of being able to find and sink a fortified pirate ship. My plan was to get on the ship, kill the crew, and sink it that way, but the game didn't like that, so it never got completed even when I successfully pulled it off. After a lot of disappointment, I went back to Seruno and talked to the one quest giver to fight the Cult of Greenwish. This quest gives a fair amount of experience and you also get to fight a fairly tricky boss that was a bit of a challenge at my level. The nice thing about this boss is that he has drops that are very good for mages, so I was hopeful. After fighting him for a bit, I managed to take him down. When I did that though, I managed to drop his staff. I'm not too sure about whether the staff is good or not, and I was really honestly not about to find out since I was going mage on this character. So after fighting and defeating Cernix, I explored around the island, gathered treasure, and then departed for Monera Garden, where I thought I had access to a, another quest at this point, but it turns out I was very wrong. Nothing much happened in hour 7 after that. I just sailed around and tried to defeat some more pirate ships, again failing. This is when I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just continue the story and maybe I'll be able to unlock some more quests afterwards, which is what I did. Since I was level 75 at the time, I decided to sail out to Fort Talos and continue the story. I proceeded to Ezio my way through Fort Talos and meet up with the second hardest boss in the game, General Argos. At least that's what I would have thought if I was playing through the game for the first time. Basically, I fought Argos and defeated him after only dying once. Feeling good about my easy victory, I then hustled my way out of Fort Talos and dodged death harder than I dodged my responsibilities in real life. But there was a slight issue afterwards. I had to be level 93 to start the Ravenna quest. Why was that an issue? I was level 83. How was I going to earn enough experience to gain 10 levels? At first, I went to Ravenna to try and talk to the one Centurion, since that's the quest I'll be doing to hit max level. But her quest is locked for a good while now. Disappointed, I went back to Sailor's Lodge to try and fish for an anglerfish. After fishing for literal days and nights, I didn't even catch a glimpse of a glowy boy. Bruh. Nothing else interesting happened in hour 8 except for a fight, which, albeit, was pretty entertaining. No one. Before we continue, I'd like to give a quick thank you to every single one of my members. Without these guys, I would not be able to do what I do today, so thank you, boys. You'll be so cute as normal. I mean... Hour 9 was also fairly anticlimactic. I did complete a quest at Sailor's Refuge where I fed a random stranger some food, which pushed me up to level 85. A third of the way through Hour 9, however, is when I sailed to look for other quests on other islands. I discovered a few more islands along the way, but I didn't find any doable quests until I made it to Palotown. 
At Palo Town, I accepted a quest where I had to go to another island and collect bananas for them. I did it out of pure desperation since I needed experience to continue the story. I grabbed the funny fruits, checked out at the nearby sunken ship, and returned to Palo Town. At this point, I was level 88 and still had no clue where to go. So I decided to depart for Shell Island. Hour 10 was interesting. After I arrived at Shell Island, there was a fortified pirate ship that crashed into the island, and it was within cannon shot. So I hastily went to the shipwright and got some cannons, placed them on the ship, since I didn't have any cannons on my sailboat at the time, and sunk the thing. I did it! Maya's quest was complete! After that, I accepted a search quest that required me to find four abandoned camps scattered throughout Shell Island. Completing that quest allowed me to finally hit level 90, pushing me one step closer to Ravenna. So I decided to accept the giant banana quest, and I found three quickly. The last two bananas took some time. In my impatience, I decided to depart and head to a location that I haven't completed before, a Cursus Keep. Shortly after arriving at the tower, I immediately got struck with insanity, and I started hallucinating. Well, my character did, but that's a bad joke. Thankfully, these hallucinations couldn't do anything to me so long as I was aware of them. After some exploration, I talked to a ghost, and he asked me to find his journal. After some more exploration, I came up to this tower that looked like it was safe, except I could walk straight through it. Inside the hollow object, there was this pit with shadow skeletons in it. So I jumped inside of it, and... Yeah, that was embarrassing. Anyways, I sailed back to the island, got the journal, and returned it to the spooky boy. Upon returning the journal to Rackham, I leveled up to level 93, which means that I am ready to depart for Ravenna. Before I did that, I searched around a cursus for more treasure, departing only after I was finished. After arriving in Ravenna, I decided to continue the story a little bit before trying to level up anymore. I talked to the townspeople, got some intel on goons, and then moved on to doing some side quests. I got as many quests as I could do at this point. I talked to the person who lost their bag, I offered to collect tomatoes, and also deliver cargo to Frost Mill. Hour 11 was literally just me trying to complete all those quests I accepted. I brought the cargo from Ravenna to Shell Island so I could get more cargo at Shell Island, and also finish the giant banana quest, which I did end up completing. While at Shell Island, I also completed a lot of treasure maps. I managed to get my hands on a ram blueprint that works with my ship, and I also managed to collect 20 seashells for the seashell collection quest back at Ravenna. At the end of these quests, I was level 100. 101, 24 levels away from max level. Then I decided to do something very exciting, super exciting, very intense. I decided to do some fishing. Yay, seahorse. Fishing was so exciting that I got bored of it at hour 12, so I decided to continue the story a bit and fight Lady Karina. After making it to the shiny plains, I then threw hands with the funny earth magic lady. The fight was over in one attempt. Lady Karina is one of the easiest bosses out of the main bosses since she's super predictable and easy to hit. After smacking her, I progressed in the story a bit more and made what I thought was the biggest mistake in this entire playthrough. I progressed past the Lady Karina fight and got captured. You playing? Minecraft. I like it, cut G. At the beginning of the playthrough, I was trying and also aiming to hit max level before this point since the King Calvus fight is pretty tricky. Well, I have to live with my mistakes since there is literally no way of skipping this boss fight without first losing. So with sadness, I continued through the story through the mines. I broke out of the mines and continued, via cutscenes by the way, into the King Calvus boss fight. This boss is one of the hardest bosses in the game and you have no time to prepare in between the mines area and his boss fight. And as a level 107, it was not going to be easy. The first attempt, I managed to drop his HP down to two-thirds before dying. But on the second attempt, Lady Luck smiled her beautiful face on me. Mid-attempt, another player joined my fight and helped me take him down. While I did die, Calvus's HP didn't reset since there was another player there, so I had another chance at taking him down. The fight was a slugfest. I was taking damage. His HP was trickling down. At about 500 HP left, the other player died, and I only had 500 HP left. This was do or die. After a few more hits, however... 
We won! King Calvis defeated at level 107. After beating Calvis, I continued the story over to Windrow Island and decided to head back to Ravenna afterwards so I could at least try to hit max level. I had to go and level up a bit more anyways before I could continue the story since the Mount Alterate's quest requires level 119 to start it. So when hour 13 rolled around, I decided to spend a fair amount of time completing the locational story quests that led up to the Mount Alterate's quest and also level up to max level by farming the Century and Duel quest, which this process took up all of hour 13. There was also a fight that happened in the center of Ravenna towards the end of hour 13 though, so that's cool. At hour 14, I was challenged to duel another player. I accepted it and tried my absolute best, but unfortunately I lost since I have major skill issue. Oh, okay, and I also had level 50 gear still. After I got kicked harder than when I kicked furniture accidentally at 3 a.m., I went back to farming the Centurion quest to level up to level 119 for the Authorize quest. I hit it and immediately departed for the mountain. After reaching all threes, I entered the massive cave system in the center of it and navigated it until I came across the small little pond with fish. I decided to do a little bit of fishing. You know, nothing special. But then the unexpected happened. I caught a legendary fish. This thing was valuable. So I held onto it, at least for a little bit. After that, I found the exit and got on top of the mountain, navigated my way to the ancient temple and awakened my character. Since I went with a mage build on this character, I was able to pick a second magic type. At the beginning of this video, I picked a direct damage magic type. So this time I decided to pick something that had both tick damage and was also a magic type that I hadn't played with before. So I picked acid. I'll admit, lightning and acid is a bit of a strange combo, but hey, it works. Kind of. Once I obtained my second magic type, I left all threes and returned to Windrow and finished the story. At this point, the only real goal that I had was to hit level 125. So I returned to Ravenna and did exactly that. When I returned to Ravenna, I was level 122, so I literally just had to fight the Centurion around six more times to hit max level. So I did that. And about a third of the way into hour 15, I hit max level. Sadly, that was the end of the major goals that I had for this video. But I'm not done yet. We've still got a lot more to do. Shortly after I hit max level, I then returned to Rubica and sold stuff, upgraded, and enchanted my gear. While I was doing stuff, I actually encountered one of my members and tried getting my hands a hold of some titanium armor through trading, which they happened to have. Sadly, they only had the chest piece, so I would have to get the leggings later. Once my titanium armor was upgraded and enchanted with first Thing. No strong. Badger's moment. I then immediately went to King Calvis. My plan was to farm funny Aether Curse Mans until I got all of his items. About halfway through the second attempt, there was another player that joined me and we fought him for the rest of hour 15. That whole process of me fighting Calvis and fishing kinda repeated a bunch. And I did that for hour 16, 17, and for the first half of hour 18. Halfway into hour 15, however, I decided to mix some things up and go farm Cernix for a while. As I was on my way to fight him, I came across a crate that just so happened to have some Titan of leggings in them. How lucky. As I approached the forest of Saruno again, I made my way up to the funny earth magic user and proceeded to throw hands, or more accurately, lightning bolts and globs of caustic fluid. At this stage in the game, Cernix is very easy, and it only takes about eight bolts from either magic to lay him out. So I repeated that for a little bit, then got bored. So I went to Shell Island and did some gaming there. Oh, and while I was there also, I also painted some parts of my ship. Now the USS Bucket of Splinters looks a little bit more dripped out. In hour 19, I decided to go around and discover all of the islands. At first, I discovered Thorin's Refuge, then Dark Pine Isle, and then Mango Isle. But while I was on Mango Isle, I found a cave that allowed me to fish and catch freshwater fish. After fishing for a little bit, I managed to catch a few common fish. Nothing special, but then I got bored again. <laughs> so I departed and discovered discovered Elm Island. That's why I was still bored and also right by Pelion Rift at that point, I decided to do a funny and walk the entirety of it. There was literally nothing on top of it. So I decided to set up a camp and grab a picture since I might have been the only person who walked the entirety of the rift, at least at the time. I then went and discovered Goso Jungle, which was the last island that I needed to discover. After that, I reset and went back to Ravenna and went fishing once more since I kind of wanted to get more of the sunken set. In hour 20, I returned to the activities that I did prior to exploring. I fought Calvis, then went fishing. But do you remember the anglerfish quest that I had for literally hours? Well, at this point, I still haven't finished it. So after defeating Mr. Sparkle Princess, I decided to go fishing. First, cast. 
I got an anglerfish. I was both happy and disappointed since I couldn't get that back when I was actually leveling. Oh well, glad it's done though. Moving into hour 21, I was still farming Calvis. Surprising, I know. But wait, I did something new for one. A quarter of the way through hour 21, I decided to pack up and head for Fort Talos again to go farm General Argos. Argos has some good items for warriors and other melee classes, so I figured I could get some good loot for later. But after arriving at Talos, there was already a player that was already there farming him. He invited me to the party and we both absolutely melted him. Karina, King Calvus, and Cernix. But I also decided to try and get some more drops from Cernix. Shortly after fighting Cernix, however, I managed to get another drop. It was his boot. Hey, that's all right, since that's our now, what, fifth boss drop? Yeah, I'll take that. But me fighting Cernix took up the entirety of hour 23. Cernix spawned, I fought Cernix, I shocked and melted him, I didn't get a drop, and I was sad. That's the entirety of hour 23. I know, I know, super exciting. Hour 24 was basically me wrapping everything up. I left Sereno and went straight for Fort Talos to farm General Argos once more. When I arrived, there were two other players farming him already. I joined them and then we managed to get some of the fastest boss kills in the game as of right now. At this level, Argos is also easy, just like Serenix, but you still need to be careful since he can melt your HP. But the unexpected happened again. About a third of the way into hour 24, this happened. Another shirt! I was surprised to get the first one, but two? That's lucky. After fighting him for a few minutes, I decided to do some fishing and managed to catch another anglerfish. Still kind of salty about the last one, but hey, I'll take what I can get. As a last hurrah for this hour, I decided to go and fight King Calvus one more time to see if I could beat him again. And... I managed to do so. After a death, of course. Calvus do be kind of hard. So after 24 hours of grinding, we have come to this setup. So as of right now, I'm using dual strong teal armbands. I have a bursting titanium armor, which I probably could change if I... Well, he gets a strong if I really tried to. I have some strong iron pauldrons, which actually look pretty cool in the armor, not gonna lie. Strong titanium leggings, which was actually a W thing. Glad I got this. Swift defense amulet. As for my stat, everything went into magic because I went full mage. Lightning and acid, I chose lightning mainly because really good direct damage and acid has some really good uh, passive damage. But as for the boss drops, we did get a couple of really good ones. So we got two uh, bronze chainmail shirts from Argos. We managed to pull a Ravenna noble armor and we also managed to pull a set of leggings from Cernix. Other than that, we didn't get any drops from King Calvus, which really sucks because I was kind of hoping to get something from King Calvus. But that's okay. I'll just have to farm him on my Conjurer's account. But if you haven't checked out this video yet, then make sure to go check out this video where I show off my Poison Conjurer build. But either way, thanks for watching.